Welcome to the series of our pathology presentations. For today's session, I have compiled a few case-based discussions on gynae histopathology cases focusing on endometrial tumors. Our first case is a 69-year-old lady who was admitted with history of pervaginal bleeding and a rapid weight loss over the last six to eight weeks. CT scan showed a mass in uterus. Endometrial biopsy was taken. This picture shows a low power view of a papillary tumor with broad fibrovascular cords and with cellular budding. This is a high power view of the same case, which shows high grade rounded nuclei with prominent nucleoli. There is some hobnailing as well, and the nuclei can be seen on the apex. This is an aberrant staining of P53 with all uh, and most of the nuclear staining positive for P53. This case was negative for ER, PR and Vimentin. It was diagnosed as serous adenocarcinoma of endometrium. Now when coming to differentials for papillary tumors of endometrium, we should consider serous adenocarcinoma papillary areas in clear cell carcinoma and villoglandular pattern of endometrioid carcinoma. When it is serous carcinoma, we can see complex pattern of papillae with broad fibrovascular cores and with cellular budding. Rounded nuclei are present towards the apex with prominent nucleoli. The background of the tumor shows no association with atypical hypoplasia. For window glandular endometrioid carcinoma, we have delicate fibrovascular cores with elongated cells perpendicular to the long axis of basement membrane. And the elongated nuclei are present at the base of the cell. Nucleoli are inconspicuous, and these cases can be associated with atypical hypoplasia, and they are usually low grade. Clear cell carcinomas would show hobnailing and clear cells. Now, best way to confirm these cases are by doing PR, P53 and Vimentin. You can also do P10 if it is available in the lab. For serous adenocarcinoma, P53 will show an aberrant staining pattern that is either overexpression in the tumor or null type. ERPR are either weak or negative, Vimentin is negative, and P10 is negative. For endometrioid adenocarcinoma, P53 is wild type. That is, you will see a mixed pattern, like a few cells will be positive and few cells will be negative. P10 is positive, ERPR and Vimentin are all positive. If you are suspecting clear cell carcinoma, then you should do napsin A, which will be positive in clear cell carcinoma. ER is usually negative and PR is of file type in those tumors. Our second case is a biopsy from a mass protruding out of cervix in a 55-year-old lady with postmenopausal bleeding. Now, in this view, we can see a glandular tumor with confluence of some glands. There is stroma between some glands, but here in this area, there is confluence. We can see neutrophilic infiltration and necrosis, and nuclei are a sort of high-grade nuclei with some showing prominent nucleoli. So this was diagnosed as a grade two endometrioid adenocarcinoma after confirming with the immunos. So in this, Vimentin was positive and P16 and CEA were negative. We performed P16 and CEA in this tumor because of the history in this case, because uh, the tumor was coming out of cervix and it was just a biopsy. So if it is endometrial endometrioid adenocarcinoma, then Vimentin will be positive and P16 and P CEA will be negative. And if it is endocervical endometrioid, then Vimentin is negative 
and P16 and CEA will be positive. When we are dealing with endometrial carcinomas, these days you should think of Lynch syndrome, that is hereditary non-polyposis colorectal cancer syndrome. So it is usually associated with colorectal malignancies. Endometrial carcinomas are also frequent amongst gynecological malignancies, and uh, we can see many colon polyps in this syndrome. And also there is increased risk of cancers of stomach, small intestine, liver, biliary ducts, upper urinary tract, brain, skin, ovaries, and as I said earlier, endometrium also. So in this, usually there will be a loss of expression of mismatch repair proteins, that is MLH1, PMS2, MSH2, PMSH6, and Lynch syndrome. Now, our third case is endometrial tumor in a 65-year-old lady. This is a very, very straightforward case of clear cell carcinoma. We can see sheets of tumor cells which are polygonal in shape and with clear cytoplasm and nuclei looks high grade. They are pleomorphic and with uh, many showing nucleoli. So we did napsin A on this, which was positive. And uh, it will be ER negative with wild type P P53 staining if you are thinking of other differentials. Fourth case is a 66 year old lady who presented with metastatic adenocarcinoma of unknown primary. Immunos on lymph node biopsy were suggestive of serous type adenocarcinoma. The lady had six cycles of chemotherapy followed by total hysterectomy with bilateral salpingo-oophorectomy. On cross-examination, uterus showed a polypoid tumor. This is a view showing a polypoid tumor with here I can see some hyalinization and here is all uh, rhabdoid differentiation. This power shows uh, uh, highlights rhabdoid differentiation better. And uh, there was only focal surface epithelium, which was showing nuclear atypia and tufting and some focal calcification. And this is a um, section from the tumor, which shows abundant hyalinization and some epithelial nests and some you know, sort of rhabdoid cells. We did CK7 and WT1, which were both positive in these nests and also on the surface epithelium showing nuclear atypia. We did multiple blocks on this case and uh, uh, similar changes were seen everywhere. So this was diagnosed as post chemotherapy changes in malignant mixed Mullerian tumor. Now our fifth case is a case scenario with a coexisting unilateral ovarian tumor and endometrial tumor. Now problems in such cases is whether these are synchronous primary tumors or metastatic tumors from either or one another. This distinction is very important as the pathologist decision changes the stage of either tumors. Now features favoring synchronous primary tumors are that there will be different morphologies of both the tumors but they may have similar morphologies also, but they're usually low grade. One mass in ovary rather than multiple nodules and mass involving the inner aspect of ovary as well, rather than just being subcapsular tumor deposit. And now though variable, usually if it is low grade primary synchronous, you may not see lymphovascular invasion, but there can be. Now, carcinoma can be confined to endometrium or inner half of myometrium when it comes to endometrial tumor. It is usually of low grade and again, usually like no lymphovascular invasion if it is low grade, but it is variable. We can still see it. And serosa and parametrial tissue are usually not involved, but they can be involved. Now, features favoring metastasis is that similar morphology of tumors, usually they will be high grade with lymphovascular invasion, 
and ovary will be showing multiple nodules usually capsular and subcapsular and in uterus carcinoma will be in outer half of myometrium involving serosa parametrial tissue and axle structures and uh, that those features should favor metastasis thank you if you have any questions please uh, leave your questions in the chat box and i will get back to you with the answers Thank you.